Welcome back here on the Senior Network. We're discussing the holidays and the new year. And uh, Becky, earlier you had mentioned about the dynamics of children coming to town and so forth. We talk about that a lot, but it's so yeah. important. Oh, I, well, absolutely. Um, everyone um, who's considering the Cypress always needs some support from their family. Sure. And, um, and it's, uh, there's no better time than at Christmas or even Thanksgiving when families come together and you know children haven't seen their mom and dad in several months or sometimes they live in Singapore and they haven't been there for a year and they're like, wow, mom and dad have really what we call aged in place sure. and are starting to see subtle changes in their behavior or needs. Um, and they could be simple things like they're not driving anymore at night. Well, that could be right. problematic yeah. or, or they're hearing. Or, and so um, they, they start looking for other life alternatives and one is a, a clearly the Cyprus. So it is after when families come together, um, we get we tend to get more phone calls from children or from the, the folks who are thinking about moving to the Cyprus. And, and we try to figure out how we can meet their needs. And that may just be, hey, let's think about a wait list. Um, we say if you want to make the Cyprus your home within a three-year period, right. uh, we encourage you to get on our wait list. I mean, let's, I mean, a lot can happen in three years. Right, exactly. I mean, if someone aging from 70 to 73 or 75 to 78, you know, a lot can happen. And the one thing we always are promoting at the Cyprus is come to the Cyprus five years early rather than five minutes too late. Um, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. That means you know, we have to re require a physical. That's sure. required by the state of yep. South Carolina. And um, their doctor has to say that they can live independently. Um, and so I hate those phone calls when they're five minutes too late. Well, plus that you makes want to get me to sad. To enjoy it. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Can, yeah. And couples come in together. I always advocate for couples. Don't wait for, you know. Every now and then I do get the couple comes in like, well, when he goes or when she goes, you know, I'm going to move sure. to the Cypress. I'm like, no, that's not the time to move to the Cypress. <laughs> right. That's sad. Yeah. Come together as a, yeah, together and, and enjoy all, all the things, the amenities that the Cypress has to offer. Absolutely. Rebecca, I'm sure you see the same thing. Yeah, and five minutes too late. So one of our mottos is if you plan, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And talking about five minutes too late. Can I use that? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, use I like that. There you go. <laughs> um, but one of, I love sitting with clients and they came in, they went to a workshop, they're all gun ho about estate planning and kids are a blessing and sometimes talking to your kids are a curse. Um, we see them both ways. Most of the times, especially around the holidays or the clients that come in after the new year, they talk to their kids about estate planning, they're ready to go, the kids have good ideas. Sometimes, and the ones that frustrate me the most is husband and wife are sitting there and they always say, well, when the spouse passes, then I'll get a trust, then I'll right. do asset protection. And we have to tell them, and people get very offended, but I deal, as an attorney, you always have to deal with all the consequences Friends, and all right, the what it's if. it's all gonna fall back on you. And I always yeah. ask him, I said, well, what if when you pass, your surviving spouse has Alzheimer's and can no longer make decisions for themselves? How are you going to make a trust then? Exactly. So you got to do it beforehand rather than later because it's easy to update a plan, but it's really hard to carve a plan from scratch. Um, and kids, you can't come in and just, oh, I'm going to fix mom and dad's estate plan and change beneficiaries and make everything no, better. Really. It doesn't work that way and you can't do it. The other thing too is with like powers of attorney mm -hmm. and kids wanting to help and kids wanting to take care of mom and dad. We have a lot of Clients that come in with powers of attorney, like, oh, I gave my daughter access to my Wells Fargo bank account. Well, that's not going to help you shut down Hargrave. That's not going to help you sign the paperwork for the Cypress or for home health. And, you know, January 1st, 2019, the South Carolina overhauled the guardianship and conservatorship code. It's a lot harder to get guardianship and conservatorship now, which was the purpose mm -hmm. of the code. So you don't have those appropriate powers of attorneys your children aren't going to be able to step up and help you. Um, so you've got to have all those in place as well. And when people wait to plan, you leave your kids with a mess. And it costs a lot of money, and you end up in probate, and you end up in guardianship and conservatorship. And it's, and it's a mess that could have easily been avoided if you came in five minutes early and had the conversation and kind of got your ducks in a row. Question for you. Okay. Uh, you, you brought up one has the power of attorney, one has financial um, responsibility. Do you recommend like one responsible um, 
daughter or son have power of attorney, financial power of attorney, and healthcare power of attorney, all three? So it just depends. Um, it depends on your family. It depends on your child. Like my parents, they're each other, and I'm the first one up for financial and health. Okay, and got it. It's my brother. Uh huh. Um, but you know, I have an aunt who's got one child that's a CPA and one child that's a nurse, uh -huh. and so <laughs> the CPA is the financial, and the nurse is the healthcare. So it just depends. Um, when you're talking about powers of attorneys, I always recommend. Who are you going to have 100% trust in mm -hmm. to follow your plan and to take care of you? And if it's the same person for both documents, great. If you want one and then the other, that's fine too. It's just you want to make sure that if you don't know what's going on, you're not going to be worried about somebody taking care of you. Because if you're hesitant even a little bit, that might not be the person you need. Exactly. There, there's a reason for the doubt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see, I see yeah, so that. what I've seen, what's a personal representative compared to a power of attorney? So we get that a lot. So a power of attorney, um, powers of attorneys are active right now. So if I'm incapacitated, my health care and financial power of attorney can take care of my bills. Whereas the moment I pass, if you have a will, a personal representative is the same thing as an executor. And so personal representatives are who manage your estate after you pass. So power of attorneys while you're right. living and breathing, personal representative is after you pass. Great information. That's all the time we have again, guys. What? I know. I know. <laughs> that one might quit. Oh my gosh, till next time. I know. Yeah. Becky, thank you so you much for joining Rebecca's us. You have two Rebecca's here. Yeah. 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 Oh, you threw me off too, right? <laughs> <laughs> Glad to have you, Rebecca. Thank, thank, thank you. You really threw thank me you. off on that one. Right. Right. Yeah. Please take a moment, if you will, and get a chance and email us your comments or questions if you have any. And again, thank you for joining us here on the Senior Network where senior care experts come together. We'll see you the next time.